Hello, I'm Wendy. Today I'm going to be doing a watercolour Christmas card tutorial using some easy experimental salt techniques. Here is one I did earlier and I'm going to paint something along these lines, um, giving you some tips for working wet into wet and using salt to produce the effect of snow on the trees behind the cottage and also in the foreground. Here's the pencil drawing I did. If you do have a go at this, be careful not to press on too hard with your pencil lines because they'll need rubbing off at the end. Um, be very careful also of the chimneys. Make sure that they're sitting on the roof properly. The two colours that I'm using today are cobalt blue and light red. And I'm using this nice little palette here and squeezing some fresh tube colour. I would usually use a larger palette, but um, with more mixing area, but this is a nice size to, uh, to demonstrate and to show you the colours in the mixing. This is the cobalt blue that I'm uh, doing some colour swatches with now. And then just for interest, um, I'll show you a couple of other blues that can be used. This is ultramarine. Um, as you can see, it is quite a lot warmer than the cobalt blue. I'm putting a bit of extra water on the end there just to uh, just to see exactly how light the colour gets. And this is Prussian blue. We won't be using this today but um, it is worth experimenting with with the light red because they're complementary colours and do work very well together. And this is light red I'm mixing now. If you're not familiar with the colour you may be a little bit surprised. It's not really looking that red, it's looking more like um, a burnt sienna or a burnt sienna with a touch of red in it. It's a very earthy colour. It's a lovely mixer with the blues. Now the whole picture that I'm going to paint today for the, um, the Christmas card is just going to be painted in these two colours. So it's a really good idea to do some colour swatches and to experiment with the colours just to see what you can get. And what I'm doing here is gradually adding some of the cobalt blue to the light red to see if I can get some sort of subdued, knocked back sort of purpley colours. You may want to experiment and to use some of the other blues as well. You could also try a different red. Um, cadmium red would probably work quite nicely, um, particularly with the um, ultramarine and the cobalt blue, I think. You can see the mixes here are getting progressively cooler and going to a more sort of bluey purple. If you like my approach to colour mixing and practising, then you might enjoy a video I made earlier um, about mixing greens. I'll put you a link in the description box below. When we come to do the painting, I shall be doing quite a lot of wet into wet work. So I thought it might be a good idea just to demonstrate um, how to paint the trees wet into wet in the background. And if you're unfamiliar with the technique, I do suggest you have a practice first on some scrap paper as I'm doing. As you can see, I have two mixes here, a very light cobalt blue, which is very watery, which is going to be the background. And I have a stronger mix, quite a stiff mix of the cobalt blue and the light red. Now, while that background sky is wet, I'm putting in the fir tree, the Christmas tree if you like, and if you notice I'm continually going back to that pool of paint. If you don't do this, instead of putting the paint on, you'll start pulling off that blue background paint. So it really is important to get enough of that stiff mix of paint on there so that it stays in one place and you're not pulling out the background paint. And now just a sprinkling of table salt on there while it's still wet. So I'm having a go at another one here and what I'm doing first is I'm wetting the area before I put the blue paint on. Um, it's supposed to be clear water but I've picked up a little bit of pink that doesn't matter. Um, but I think if you're having problems doing the wet in the, into wet then it might be a good idea to damp the paper first before you put the first colour on. Um, it'll keep everything a lot damper and you might find it easier. 
you've not got to be very careful with this background wash it's um it's a sky after all so it's not got to be perfect So here again I'm putting on the, the stiffer mix of the cobalt blue and the light red and we'll just see um, see the difference here between the two. Um, I think this one is going to, it's looking as if it's going to be quite a lot wetter. I'm putting the paint on quite strongly and what you'll find no matter how many of these you do they're all going to look different and it's a really interesting little exercise. In actual fact, you, if you get some uh, some nice examples of this work, um, you can use them as a little card. If you've got a little um, aperture card, you can make some little Christmas cards out of them. Um, sometimes what I do is, um, once the salt has dried, you could put some glitter on them as well. So this is the third one I did. I was taking a little bit more care with the background uh, sky here. Um, I think we'll speed this up a little bit. So when the paint had dried, and you can see the salt effects here, um, you can certainly see that the middle one was too wet. Um, I should have waited longer before putting the, um, the tree on. And it also looks like the colours are separating a little bit as well. I thought I'd show you this example here because um, what I've got here was instead of the discrete um, snowflakes, I've got more of a blizzard, which can look quite interesting. So now, after all this practising, Let's get some trees on this um, Christmas card. What I'm doing here is I'm, uh, I'm damping the paper and being very careful to um, put the wet paint around the chimney and the chimney pots. Do this quite carefully. Um, you can use plain water. I've tinted it just a little bit so that you can see. I always turn these little pictures upside down, I just find it easier. It's easier to paint around those shapes. So that's got, um, got the whole area covered. I do always paint outside the area of where the card's going to be as well. Doing this means you can keep your options open a little bit for your final composition. So what I'm doing now is I'm working um, in exactly the same way as I did on the practice ones. We're putting some of the light cobalt blue on the background and we've wet the area behind but the little houses themselves the little cottage is dry so the paint shouldn't run into the dry area and i'm keeping a fairly hard edge at the bottom of the sky and the beginning of the hedge line as well as you can see from there and now we've got this stiff mix of the cobalt blue and the light red going on. Again you can see I'm constantly going back to that pool which is really important because it keeps a good strong dark tone there and you're not picking up the paint as you, as you, um, as you paint along. Now if you wanted to do a lighter tree working wet into wet um, you might think that you put more water into your mix but this is totally wrong if you put more water into that mix you're using you're going to get these horrible cauliflowers forming um, the way to make a lighter tree behind there I'm not sure if I do it on here or not yes I did I got rid of some of the paint off the brush 
and then I painted it without going back into the pool so much. So the trick is to not to get more water into your mix, but to take water, but to take the paint, I'm sorry, off your brush. And then you can get a lighter tone where you want it. I'm not sure how well it works, that tree behind, but it is looking as if it's behind. And now this tree I'm painting at the moment, I've got a lot more pigment in there. And I'm working it the same as those trees on the left hand side. And I'm keeping um, quite a hard edge at the bottom of these trees and the top of that hedge row, as I said. Um, mainly because I want to leave a little bit of white there, a little bit of contrast and to show some snow later on. And now we're getting um, a little bit of the table salt on here. I'm putting it in the sky as well, um, not just on the trees, because it can give quite a nice effect even on a very pale wash in the sky. And just a little bit of or you might call it fiddling, a little bit of um, touching up the top of the, he the hedge line here. I want it to look a bit like a hedge and not a, a straight hard line or any odd shapes there. You can see that the salt is already starting to take an effect on the trees there. So I'm going to start on the foreground area here. I'm going to try and keep it wet into wet and very simple. I've got three mixes of paint, a very light cobalt blue, and then I've got a sort of medium mix, a medium thickness mix of light red and the cobalt blue, and then a very thick mix as we did before with the cobalt blue and the light red, but this time maybe airing a little bit more on the red side than the blue side to give a little bit of warmth in the foreground. What I'm hoping to do also is to leave an area of very light colour leading from the sort of doorway of the cottage down to the bottom um, to sort of give a lead in to the picture, not a path exactly, but something that will lead the eye up to the cottage. So this is the mid-tone going in here, the mid-tone of the light red and the cobalt blue. Um, I've got the painting at a slight angle so that the paint is running down if you find when you're doing this that things are drying too quickly, then get a little spray bottle and spray your picture and hold it vertical and let the paint run down. So this is showing you the mixes there. You see the difference between the three of them and this final one is a very stiff mix. So when you put that on there, it's going to stay in place. Now I'm using a little bit of dry brush work here with the stiff mix, holding the brush on its side to sort of give a suggestion of some bushes there that are quite dark but have got snow covered on them. You have to be careful not to get um, too symmetrical either side of the cottage with your colours and your shapes. You've also got to be careful not to go too dotty. You don't want to end up with lots of dots everywhere. So you're trying to work wet into wet very quickly trying to keep everything wet, trying not to let things dry, trying to think about all these things you're supposed to be doing. So <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> think of it as being fun. You can see that I keep holding the paper up a little bit just so that the paint will run down. The thing to do is not to worry about it too much, just let the paint do its own thing. If you've got a change of tones in there, some light tones and some dark tones, it's going to look interesting. So some even darker tones going in here. They will stay in place as because the um, the paper is drying. These washes I'm putting in now, the darker ones, should stay in place and keep quite dark. And then finally, I'm putting um, a little bit of salt on this, more at the bottom. 
um, to keep, because the salt pulls out the paint, it will keep it quite light at the bottom and not so much in the areas that I want to keep darker. And there again, just um, letting the, the paint run down. And then we leave that to dry. Now, when I came to back to this um, a little bit later, I was um, quite disappointed with this foreground at first because you can see all the, the lines on there. I think what had happened was it was so wet that the light red had separated from the cobalt blue and had um, left these lines in the wash area. Um, I wasn't that happy with that, but um, I thought, well, I'm going to carry on, I'm going to persevere. It may not be as noticeable, I thought, in the finished painting, and also it might add some added interest as well. Always think positive. What I'm doing here now is I'm painting the shadow side of the larger building here. I'm using a mix of the cobalt blue with a touch of the light red and I'm keeping it, I'm trying to keep it very transparent and just putting one layer on. So I'm going constantly back to my pool of colour so that my brush doesn't dry out. This keeps the tone dark and also keeps it transparent. What you don't want to do is to do more than one layer. Try and mix up a colour that's um, suitable and dark enough for the area that you want. Otherwise, if you keep putting on layers and layers of the watercolour, you're going to lose the transparency. Now, with that same mix, I'm painting um, the shadow underneath the eaves. And that's going to be the same colour as the shadow side of the building, and we'll merge into it. I'm doing the left hand side, I'm sorry, the right hand side of the chimney because in my little painting the light's coming from the left. And then we're going to work on the little outbuilding, if you like, on the side of the main building. I'm working this in the same way, and as you can see, I'm I'm leaving some white at the top of the the hedgerow there, as I mentioned earlier, just to give a little bit of interest and contrast in the picture. And maybe a little bit of shadow on the chimneys here. With a very dark mix of our two colours, I, I painted in the, the windows and uh, the doors the left-hand um, corners of them that sort of stand for the shadows. And now I'm putting in the obligatory little bit of red into the picture. That is a natural fact, um, still light red, so it's looking quite bright there. So we've got a nice bright red door, and I don't want to do the um, chimney pots quite as red. So that's um, more of a subdued light red for the chimney pots. And if you would like more help on painting simple buildings like this little cottage, I do have a video that you can watch and I'll put a link in the description below. So what I'm doing now is brushing off the excess salt that has well and truly dried and using a rubber, getting rid of the pencil lines. Um, they're not always that easy to remove the pencil lines, so as I said at the beginning of the video, don't press on too hard. Just give yourself a few guidelines if you like. It makes a heck of a difference, doesn't it, when you remove the pencil lines. I think it looks um, an awful lot better, much more painterly. Now I'm just um, going to show you how to use um, a little bit of um, white gouache or white acrylic um, just to tidy up any odd shapes that um, you don't like the look of. I thought I'd put a little bit of smoke coming out of the chimney here just to suggest a sign of life in the cottage and I'm doing this with white gouache or again you could use white acrylic. Don't overdo it, just suggest the smoke there. You can see here the cards that um, I've been using recently. I get them from Craft Creations and I'll give you a link in the description box below. These particular ones are 8 inches tall by 6 inches wide 
and this gives you an image of about six by four inches. I like these cards particularly because um, the size six inches by eight inches is a standard frame size. So if you get, gave these cards to somebody as a gift, they could easily buy a frame, you know, from your local store and, um, and slot them in. I have a wide range of these cards in my eBay shop, um, description below as usual. They are listed as a hand-painted card and gift in one. So here are the three images that you've seen in the video um, mounted in the cards. Uh, on the left hand side is the demonstration picture. I think the foreground is working well so I am glad I persevered with that painting. I will in future though um, be aware that these colours can separate if they do get very wet. The middle painting I did extremely quickly um, and <laughs> We've got a few blizzards there working with the salt, but I think it looks quite effective. And then the little picture on the right was one I did before the demonstration painting, which again, I do quite like that one. Um, the foreground is softer in this one, and maybe the snow effects on the trees are a bit more apparent. As always, I hope you enjoyed the video and um, did find this tutorial useful and helpful, particularly when you're working wet into wet with watercolour. I really enjoyed painting these pictures, it's one of my favourite occupations, painting wet into wet and being experimental with the watercolour. Next up I think I'll do an autumn scene, so I've managed to get my seasons well and truly the wrong way round this year. Please leave comments, I always do my best to answer them, and also you can hit the like button and subscribe if you don't want to miss anything.